cloudy skies in San Antonio as we welcome you to Trinity University for today's game between the Center College Colonels and the Trinity University Tigers. I'm Cole Isaacson, joined alongside Caleb Reed and Luke Terry. It was a shootout victory for the Tigers against Barry last week. They win 46 to 37 as the offense was firing on all cylinders. Caleb, they're averaging over 42 points per game and there's still confetti in the parking lot from their last home game against Rhodes. How do they keep it going? Yeah, I mean, Trinity is a team that absolutely just comes into this game on a roll. They're averaging over 40 points per game, 42.6 if you want to be really technical about it, but it looks like they are not going to be slowing down absolutely anytime soon. This is a team that has scored more than 30 points per game in every week so far this season, but it hasn't just been from the offense either. Defense has done a really good job of forcing turnovers to give good field position, and also they've done a, or, uh, they've done a bit of scoring themselves. Uh, remember last week with Harmel getting uh, that pick six. So it's really just about maintaining the momentum. Uh, whenever we talked to Coach Urban yesterday, he said just, or, or he said just to make sure to keep it rolling, keep the momentum, and, and not get distracted by anything that really happens. As for center, they're coming off their bye week, but before that, they played the same Barry Vikings that this Trinity team played last week. It didn't go well, a 49 to 16 loss. Luke, they come into this game one and three. They haven't finished below 500 since 2004. A win today would go a long way towards keeping that intact. How do they do it? Yeah, first of all, you mentioned that one and three record, and I had a brief opportunity to talk with Coach Fry yesterday ahead of this one. And one of the big things that he said to me was, this is not a program that's used to being one and three. There's a lot of factors that go into that record. A couple of close losses to kick the season off. And then obviously a Barry team that is very, very talented and was picked to finish second in the SAA in the preseason poll. But this is a center team that was picked to finish third in that preseason poll. So they have a lot of their conference schedule remaining. But as you mentioned, things don't get any easier here this afternoon. They're going to need to find a way to shut down what is a red hot Trinity offense. And I think you do so by getting after Tucker Horn, trying to disrupt his rhythm. But he's been so good this season at just getting the ball out on time. And this offense has just called great game plan after great game plan and been pretty much ready for anything that's been thrown at them. So it's going to be a really, really tall task. But on the other side of the ball, they're going to have to get a young quarterback going early. And I think you do the same thing that Trinity tries to do offensively. Establish the run game get the ball out of his hands quickly, and just keep yourself in front of the chains. I think when teams come in here to San Antonio, it's the biggest issue that we see. You get into second and long situations behind the sticks, you're setting yourself up for failure. If you can put yourself in second and long, third and medium, third and short, and keep the ball rolling, and put together some long drives, then I think you have a chance for success today. These two coaches, two of the most veteran coaches in the SAA, Andy Fry's been at center since 1998. Coach Urban in his 10th year at Trinity. Luke, how much does this coaching matchup play a role in this game? Well, we talked about conversations with both coaches and Coach Urban praising Coach Fry a little bit yesterday. Just a lot of admiration for a guy who's been around for a long time and has had a ton of success in the SAA. And I think it's what's echoed from all of the coaches that we see or get to talk to in the conference, they want a really competitive conference. And I think Coach Fry enjoys having the opportunity to sharpen what is a relatively young or inexperienced center team this season against one of the top teams in the country. And I think Coach Urban appreciates the same challenge in going up against a coach that has had a ton of experience and a coach that is a defensive-minded one, served as the center college defensive coordinator before he entered the role of head coach. The Tigers all set to kick this one away. It'll be Tyler Huddle, and we know he has the leg to get this one to the end zone. He's had a lot of touchbacks this season and two 50-plus yard field goals. Cloudy skies just under 70 degrees here in San Antonio. A nice break from the sweltering heat we've had here over the past several months. Just two weeks ago, it was 98 down on the field. 
looks like there isn't too much wind either, so so kicking should not be too big of an issue for Tyler or uh, Tyler Huddle. Looks like we're about set to get SAA play underway. As we are underway from One Trinity Place in San Antonio, Texas. They'll have a chance to bring this one out. And good coverage by the Trinity Tigers there. Brought down at the 13-yard line. So here comes the center offense. They've been struggling a little recently. They're led out by their sophomore quarterback, Jack Goman. Yeah, and Goman stands in there, a big quarterback listed at six foot four. But as we talked about, this is a team that's in a little bit of limbo. Some experience on the field at pretty much every position outside of the quarterback spot. He's a sophomore. They've had a little bit of a carousel. Coach Fry talked about it. Quite a bit of competition. We could certainly see each of these quarterbacks on the depth chart in the game today. Goman throwing quickly over the middle. That's caught. And continuing to fight for extra yards as that will be taken to about the 21-yard line as that's Scotty Brown with the catch. Yeah, and as we talked about in the pregame, just getting the ball out quickly, a nice little pitch and catch to that slot receiver, a pickup of five, maybe six yards right there, puts you in good territory. you got two downs now to get about four yards. It will be second and four for this young center offense and their sophomore quarterback. It'll be a pitch. Trying to find room, but nothing there. Jacob Munoz in on the tackle for Trinity. It'll maybe be a loss of one. It'll bring up third down. And it's a good job of contain on the outside. It looks like it was Trey King at the corner spot on the near sideline. Doing a nice job of forcing that one back inside. Running back had to stutter step just a little bit to wait for a hole to open up. But as one did, or I guess failed to, it was the rest of that Trinity defense filling over there, flowing to the spot to make the tackle. It'll be third down and five. This crowd's starting to get into it a little early. Snap over the head. He's going to have to go back and get it. Going to fall down at the one-yard line, barely avoiding the end zone, so a near disaster on third down. And now center's going to have to punt from their own end zone. Yeah, and that one up over the head of Goman by a good Five plus yards right there. We'll see on the replay. It was just a bad snap. It looked like he was ready for it. He had called for it right there. Making the decision to just fall on it. It looked like he had a little bit of room to pick that one up. But I think he would have been bubbling back and running into the end zone. So didn't want to risk the safety in that capacity. But might have had the chance to throw that one away. Instead, they'll kick it from the rear of the end zone. Barnett gets this one away. Not a good kick. As it'll bounce to Nickelberry. Nickelberry turns up field inside the 30 and ultimately brought down at the 29. So not the start that center wanted, giving the Tigers good field position just outside the red zone. Yeah, and backed up in your own end zone like that shortens the distance from the snapper to the punter. So a lot of pressure or the ability to bring a lot of pressure for Trinity right there. You mentioned not a great kick. I think just trying to get that one off, make sure it didn't get blocked. But as you said, that one was a low line drive end over end. Nickelberry did a nice job splitting those first two tacklers. But a good job, the rest of the center coverage team getting down there to make a stop. So here's Tucker Horn on the offense. First play will be the Carmouche. And he'll be brought down at the 29. It'll be a gain of two on first down. Not surprising there to see Carmouche getting uh, the first handoff of the day. Of course, uh, one of the biggest rushers for Trinity uh, so far, not just this season, uh, but also uh, in terms of last week's game against Barry. He's been doing really good these last few weeks. Nobody in the backfield on second down and eight. Horn. Clean pocket over the middle. That's going to be caught. That's Carter self past the chains inside the red zone for the Tigers as it'll be first and 10 from the 18. Yeah, and Horn with just a ton of time on this throw right here. You're going to see both slot receivers 
just run those little hook routes. Defense playing that zone coverage and off those receivers by quite a bit. So Horn Davey at first looking a little bit downfield, but ultimately settling to those second and third reads in his progression and finds enough for a first down. Give to Carmouche. Up the middle, trying to fight through tacklers. But still a good run on first down. It'll be a gain of three, as that's the second carry for Carmouche already. And Caleb, you talked about Carmouche just a couple moments ago and the fact that last week against Barry, he looked especially good. We've talked about this running back group and the fact that they have relatively evenly coated the rock and shared the responsibilities. But last week, we saw a little bit of an uptick from Carmouche, got more carries than the rest of the group. Back out there with starting duties and privileges today, so we'll have to monitor that and see how evenly the shares split. Give to Carmouche again, up the middle, but center ready for him this time. Able to stay on his feet for a few extra yards, but it's going to be third and medium for the Tigers. Good job there by uh, Carmouche, able to stay up and kind of survive the initial impact, sort of being able to bounce outside there, but just center filled the box and just was able to get after him. So it'll be third down and six for Trinity. Overall, a good team in the red zone. 85, 87%, that's number one in the conference. Third down and six. Under pressure, Horn trying to escape, nowhere to go. This center defense comes up big. It's Joseph Becker in to make the tackle, and the Tigers will be forced to kick a field goal. Yeah, just a lot of heavy traffic there for Tucker Horn early on. I think the biggest aspect of that defensive play, though, is the fact that the Colonels were able to win on the edge, forced Tucker Horn to step up in the pocket, but those interior defensive linemen were still right there and right in his face when he did step up. Pretty frequently this season, we've seen Tucker Horn step up into those holes and have a lot of green grass in front of him, but there were some Colonel uniforms instead today. Tyler Huddle with the kick, and that's gonna be blocked. So center, college, this defense and special teams coming up with a huge stop after they got backed up at their own one yard line, gave the Tigers great field position. And now the flip, the script has flipped. And you want to talk about how you come in and win big games like this. You have to be able to shift momentum like they did right there. We talked about the field position game, just a ton of penetration. Not sure, it looked like that was number 87 for the Colonels who had a ton of penetration, got through relatively quick on that, and was able to get a lot of that football. That was the D-lineman that would be Colton Wessel, the senior out of Louisville. So Colton Wessel gets the big block for the center Colonels. They had two blocked kicks already this season. That'll be their third as Will McDaniel gets the call on first down. And also one interesting stat to note, that is Tyler Huddle's first missed field goal of the year. Even though it was blocked, it's still going to go down as uh, a kick that did not go through. So, Second and seven is this Tigers defense back on the field. Play action. Goman now under some pressure. He's going to take off himself, and he's going to have the first down as he strolls out of bounds at the 35. Got a nice little play design, set that one up off of the play that they ran on their first possession of the day. I think they had a little pitch that they got towards that perimeter, got everything flowing that direction. And then when Goman tucked that one on the rollout, there was really no one to the field. So a ton of green grass in front of him and he just had Carson Bird, the defensive end for Trinity chasing after him. The 6'4 quarterback able to leg that one out. He'll give it. And a good run from McDaniel. Dives at the 40, and it'll be second and short upcoming. Uh, this is a Trinity team that has typically started a little bit uh, slower in the first half than they do in the second half. But so far, doing a good job to limiting the explosive plays that we saw a lot last week. Second 
Down and two. Another handoff. Up the middle, fighting for extra yards. And it looks like he'll have a gain of four and a first down as that's Keaton Martin, the senior from Kentucky. Yeah, and so far we've seen this center team do a good job of another thing that we talked about in the open. Stay ahead of the chains. Bare minimum, get back to the line of scrimmage. They're doing even better than that in these nice runs in these first couple of possessions. Positive yardage almost every single time out. First and 10 at their own 44. Goldman steps up and he's gonna get away and slide down just short of midfield. Jacob Munoz had him in his arms. Goldman able to slip away for a few extra yards. Yeah, but electing to slide in the middle of the field and maybe a smart decision is number 52, Jacob Gunrin closing in for the hit right there. But a nice job of pulling up, peeling away from that as to not draw the penalty flag. Something that we've already seen this Trinity defense fall victim to this year is that was late hits. So nice, smart, headsy play from the linebacker right there. Second and eight. For Goldman in the center offense, moving the ball well on this drive. Goldman down the sideline, incomplete. Going for his old high school teammate, Blake Buse and Trey King in on the coverage. Yeah, just great coverage by King right there. Buson winning on the outside, but Trey King playing into that, forcing him further and further towards the sideline. So Goman would have to drop that one in perfectly. Just not a huge window there. But in addition to that, Trey King not being beat by the speed of Buson right there, running step for step, getting his eyes around, and just boxing him out from that football as it was coming in. And now the situations the center offense didn't want to be in, third and long. Third and eight to be specific at their own 46. Goman gonna step up, he's gonna try and run for it, takes the hit, but brought down short of the first down marker, Caleb Harmel and James O'Gunran able to combine on the tackle and we'll see what center does on fourth and short. Yeah, at that time saw some names that we've already called a couple of times. Carson Burr, Jacob Munoz, doing a nice job getting penetration, forcing Goman to step up into the pocket and scramble in the middle of the field for that one. We've seen him run a couple of times, but doesn't seem like he's that, that dual threat quarterback. Barnett barely gets this one away, a much better kick. So it'll hop at around the 10 yard line and go out of bounds at the nine. So a good punt for center as they flip the field position, and that could be a crucial factor in this game. Yeah, especially considering that first drive for the Tigers, starting at the Colonel's 30, 35 yard line, the fact that center was able to get that stop, able to block that field goal. I think they looked fine in that opening defensive possession. Trinity not gashing them for any big plays. Nothing was available over the top, but obviously when you start at the 30, 35 yard line, you can't hit the home run ball because you're so close to the red zone already. So we'll see if being backed up right here lets the Trinity offense take the top off that defense. If the Hutchinson lowers his shoulder, gonna take it past the 10 to the 11. So a gain of two on first down for the Tigers. It's a defensive game for both sides so far, for sure. Uh, I think both coaches are really just trying to sort of test the waters, see see kind of what they can get away with. We've only gone, you know, uh, we just passed the 10-minute mark of this game. So both teams really not want to take too many risks too early, especially in such an important conference matchup. It was a gain of four for Winston Hutchison. So it'll be second down and six, under 4.30 remaining in the quarter. Horn, really clean pocket, going deep for Merrifield, he's got him! Across midfield, falls down at the 48, dropped it right in the bucket, and the Tigers will get the easy first down. And dropping it in the bucket is exactly right, Cole. Merrifield wins off the line with a little bit of a stutter step double move. Had the cornerback frozen, he was able to blow right by him. Tucker Horn puts a beautiful ball over the top. 
that safety was closing in there, but it was a great job of Ryan Merrifield to just concentrate on the catch, able to haul that one in, sustain the hit, and hold on to the ball as he went to the ground. So the big play benefits Trinity Horn. Looking, he's going to dump it off. It's Carmouche. Carmouche weaving through tackles, taking it down to the 40-yard line. Tucker Horn and Ryan Merrifield have been one of the best connections, not just this season, but over the last two or three seasons. Uh, we got to talk to them earlier this week, of course, and just the connection between them is so good, both on and off the field. It's no surprise there that they were in great communication. Taking down the three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Play fake, Horn, and that's gonna be caught, Coleman Ego. Had a touchdown last week against Barry. Gets on the stat sheet here today. Yeah, and a nice snag by Manego right there. Demonstrating some pretty strong hands. I think that one can be undersold a bit, having to reach down below his waist. But an important snag nonetheless is that one. Enough yardage to pick up another first down for Trinity. First down at the center, 36. The Tigers starting to move the football. Manego will go into motion. Give up the middle, Hutchison. Hutchison staying on his feet. And going to be dragged down at the 32. And that will bring up second and short. An interesting formation for the Tigers right there. It looked like they brought in number 88, Alex Thiel, who is a converted offensive lineman now playing tight end. He was lined up on the outside in that Twins formation, but he came across all the way across that offensive line to deliver a block. Now he's down at the end of that offensive line on the near side of your screen. Second and six. Clean pocket. Horn going deep. It's incomplete. Just missed his man, Cole Manego. He's got four touchdowns already this season. That could have been number five. Yeah, four touchdowns, and he had three men in coverage right there. And nonetheless, Tucker Horn almost found him. It looks like one of those plays where you turn to find the ball, and it slows your momentum down just a little bit. That one only inches over the top. We'll see a different angle of it right here. Just inches away from connecting for what would have been another touchdown on what has been a fantastic season for Colmenego. Horn on third down, caught over the middle. That's Will Taylor with his first catch of the game and the Tigers will move the chains once again. And this is another one of the benefits of having someone as special as Ryan Merrifield on your offense at the receiver position. Not only is he great at running down and securing balls and catching touchdowns, but he garners so much attention because of it that you throw him in the slot right there, run him out of a spot, that vacated area left wide open, and that's why Tucker Horn was able to complete that pass for the first down. Give to Grigsby up the middle, and a decent run on the first carry for the legend Grigsby down to the 21-yard line. With that last third down conversion, it is only going to help Trinity's uh, third down conversion percentage so far this season. One of the best in the conference so far. And it's also going to put a little bit of dent in center's third down stop uh, percentage. They are one of the best in terms of stopping third downs. One of the key matchups in this game. Second and six. Horn going to the end zone again. It's caught. Touchdown. What a catch by Carter Self. Coverage draped all over him, and he reels it in for the Tiger lead. And you talk about a catch. That is an absolutely phenomenal one for Carter Self right there. Tucker Horn places this ball perfectly. This is exactly where it needs to be. But you talk about the defense being draped all over him. This cornerback, I'm not sure, will get a better look of the number right here. It's 32 on the Colonel's defense. A 
maybe someone else on the depth chart. It looks like in the game right there was Brooks Sapone, freshman out of Thompson Station, Tennessee. Was in great coverage, saw that Carter Self was trying to turn, tried to stay engaged, maybe held him just a bit to stay on his hip right there, but Carter Self was able to fight through that one and demonstrate some really strong hands in the quarter of the end zone to get the Tigers on the board just before time runs out here in the first quarter. The back shoulder throw, an absolute dot from Tucker Horn. The Tigers' success continues in the red zone. They're 46th best in the nation in that category. We already mentioned that they're best in the conference. As you see the stats, only 16 total yards for center, and that's going to have to change if they're going to get if they're going to want to tie this game. Center has so far done a really good job of limiting this Trinity offense to not really allowing huge plays. Uh, and of course, Trinity has done the same. Of course, last week it was a big struggle in Barry. Uh, in the shootout, but so far a nice low scoring game here. So a strong drive for the Trinity Tigers. They started at their own nine yard line as Huddle will send it back to center. Back in the end zone and it will be a touchback. 17 seconds remaining in the first quarter. It was a slow start for Trinity as they had that field goal blocked, but able to regain momentum on a long touchdown drive, 91 yards. Yeah, in the first couple of possessions, we saw the, the running game get going a little bit, but they really weren't able to gash this center defense with any big plays. So that second drive, that second possession of the afternoon, really, really heavy in the air. Tucker Horn was perfect on it yet again had just such an outstanding per completion percentage over the last couple of years. And as we mentioned earlier, it's really because he's in rhythm, just getting the ball out on time onto his targets. Whistle blown as the referees say, we're going to do that again. As that's a penalty on center, they'll back it up five yards. And this is exactly how you don't want to respond after giving up the first touchdown of the afternoon. Now, first and 15 for this Colonel's offense. Goman gives it up the middle, but nowhere to go, only a gain of one. Will McDaniel another carry and it'll be second down and long. And it looks like that will bring us to the end of the first quarter. 7-0 Trinity lead center on Tiger Network. We'll be back after this short break. And welcome to the second quarter on Tiger Network. 7-0, Trinity lead center. As the Colonels get the ball back with second and 14 at their own 21. Plenty of time for Goman running out. He escapes though. 
Going to bring it past the 30, takes a hit at the 35, and a good run for the sophomore quarterback, Jack Gilman. And another scramble up the middle, I think the third time this afternoon that we've seen Goman take off. But I think he's just demonstrating the youthfulness, a little bit of a lack of experience, holding on to that ball maybe a little bit too long in the pocket, but he's able to squeak out Snap of it. Snap over the head again, and Goman is not going to fall on it this time. Mac Douglas in to recover the fumble, and this Tigers defense comes up with the takeaway. Trinity's got one of the best uh, turnover differentials in the conference so far. Third so far at plus four. Make that plus five. Wait, hold on. They're going to say that center got the football back. We'll see it on the replay. Yeah, I think you're right. Center offense still on the field lining up. It looked like Goman fell on top of the football, but maybe never possessed it. You saw Mac Douglas get in there quickly and steal it away from him. I think that one might have been... Trinity football in truth, but Goman just falling on it at first was enough to give it back to the center offense. Third and 21, they run a play fake. Goman going deep, but that throws too far out of bounds. So the Tigers do not get the takeaway, even though Mac Douglas looked like he came away with the football, but they get the three and out, and center's going to be forced to punt for the third time today. Oh, no, wait, I think this third down now was everything that everything in the stadium said it was third down on that play but it's still saying it's third down so it looks like that was second down yeah I think and now back, it'll be third and 21 that long scramble that Goman had a couple of plays ago uh, looked like he was down short I think the officials gave him the yardage for the first that fumble would have been second down so now third down, and that play is going to go nowhere. Will McDaniel brought down by Jacob Munoz as now the Tigers get to force the punt. Yeah, no. Quick game so far here in San Antonio. A lot happening in the last couple of minutes as we're already into the second quarter as well. Only 27 minutes have elapsed real time since the kickoff. It'll be Ethan Barnett to punt for the third time today. He had a 30-yard punt from his own end zone, but then on a second punt, pinned the Tigers at their own nine-yard line. As this one's away, Nickelberry's going to have some room. Takes it past the 50, Nickelberry past the 30. Nickelberry to open field, and he's going to go! Touchdown, Tigers! Their first punt return TD of the season, and it belongs to Lamont Nickelberry. Yeah, and we've seen him break a couple of big returns off so far this year, both kick returns and punt returns. That one, as you mentioned, the first time that he's found the end zone. We'll see on the replay that there was a block early on that was a key part of that one. It was number 12 who was out there deep by Lamont Nickelberry allowed him to get around those preliminary coverage guys from the Colonels. And then he had a lot of open field and just navigated those lanes really well. Extra point by Huddle is good and it is 14 nothing Trinity. And now you'll see the replay of that kick return touchdown. You'll see number 12 at the bottom of your screen just left of the picture. He gets beat but does a nice job of getting back into position, staying right on the hip of the coverage man. I think that was the freshman Quentin Joseph out of Rosenberg, Texas, Foster High School, doing a nice job of not getting penalized with a block in the back right there. He was right on the hip, but he waited for that coverage man to turn his face to him. But Lamont Nickelberry doing a great job of just reading the blockage right there to start it off. And then once he had a full head of steam, he was off to the races. We're used to B.J. Stewart doing that from last season. Stewart out with an injury. Lamont Nickelberry filling in for him and filling in quite well based on that play. And the other games, he's been returning kicks and punts. A very explosive player. The freshman out of Childress, Texas. As the Tigers now have a two-score lead. Huddle all set to send it back to center. And that's just got to be an absolute gut punch 
giving up a special teams touchdown like that. As Huddle sends this one pretty shallow, they're gonna have a chance to run it. It'll be past the 20, breaks a tackle. Out of bounds at the 30 yard line. So we talked about special teams and how it was gonna play an important part in this game and we're seeing that in full spades here today. Yeah, and it really started from the jump. Trinity kicking the ball off to start the game. Center electing to take it out from deep in their own territory. And they got met pretty forcefully at their own 15-yard line. And that really started off the field position game. I think special teams, such a boom or bust situation for both teams, really. If you get a big return, it's such a swing in momentum. But if you get stopped and you get a play blown up and the defense is coming out really pumped up, and excited. Nowhere to go for McDaniel, a wall of maroon meeting him at the 30 yard line. So center already behind the chains on this drive. And also one thing that you mentioned uh, about it being a gut punch is not just an emotional gut punch, but also a physical one because now the offense has to go back out there. They only got maybe 10, 15 seconds of rest. And now they got to go back out there and try and run into this basically buzzsaw of a Trinity defense once again. This Tigers defense got gashed last week at Barry, but figured it out in the second half. As Goman, gonna get that one off, caught along the sideline, but a hard hit from Caleb Harmel, the All-American linebacker making his presence felt. That one a little bit of an odd looking play as it developed. I think Goman under center, a little bit of a bobble. It might've been caused by just a really nice initial push by that Trinity defensive front. Not sure who it would have been for the Tigers, but getting into that right guard initially, who I think was pushed back into his own quarterback, Goman kind of lofting that one towards the sideline. Certainly a dangerous play and lucky that that one wasn't intercepted. Third down and eight. Goman over the middle, that's caught. Hard hit from Quinn McDermott, but it doesn't matter as Foose, the tight end, hangs on for the first down. And that's why you trust your tight ends. The big bodies out there willing to get down and dirty in the run game, blocking some of those defensive linemen and knowing that when they're going over the middle like this one right here, they're going to take some big <laughs> licks. But Foose doing a wonderful job to survive that one from the Tigers' safety, Quinn McDermott. Center has it at their own 45 after the first catch by their tight end. High snap again. Goman throws it and that's gonna be brought down behind the line. There is a flag. So we'll see who that's on, but the indication is that it's gonna be against center. Jacob Munoz there, absolutely incredible job breaking that play up. Uh, Again, with the high snap, kind of messed up the timing, and that is something that center has struggled with so far. Center rolling into this game with a senior at center, so kind of a little bit of a surprise to see there. But so far, a little bit of struggles there on the offensive line for them. The call is holding against center. Based on the spot of the ball, it looks like Trinity is going to accept the loss of yardage on that down. So it'll be second down and 13. Play action. Goman under pressure, incomplete. Trying to hit him along the sideline, intended target was Scotty Brown, and it'll be third down and long. Yeah, and from that play, you get the sense that this offense is rattled just a little bit. Didn't see it on the replay right there, but it wasn't a really good play fake at all. The running back was way out in front. Goman was kind of just sticking the ball out there, going through the motions. And that's another thing you can't afford to do here in a game where you're already down two scores and you're behind the sticks. You have to perfect every little aspect of this game. Can't simply go through the motions. I think they're sped up a little bit and it's just due to a variety of different things. Nearly intercepted on that play. That was Casey Hampton diving for the football, but
but the Tiger is able to force the punt and another high snap on that play. Yeah, several high snaps. And as Caleb mentioned, it disrupts the timing of everything. Komen getting that one, throwing it off his back foot just a little bit because of the pressure that it was in his face already. So this Trinity defensive front doing a nice job of getting penetration and making Goman uncomfortable. The young quarterback certainly going to have to settle in if this Trinity or this center team wants to get back into the game. This one a good punt. Will Taylor back there this time. He's got a decent return past the 30 out of bounds at the 34. And that is where the Tigers will take over already up 14. Trinity doing a really good job of just taking what center is giving to them. Uh, whenever we talk to Coach Urban, of course, he mentioned that, that that is something that they try and work on every week. But it's just something that this Tiger uh, offense and defense has done a really good job of throughout the entire year and over the course of the past couple of years, just doing whatever the opponent basically allows you to do and working with that. First and 10 with 9.41 remaining in this half. Down at their own 38 yard or 33 yard line. Low snap. Horn sets up the screen to Grigsby. Grigsby trying to break a tackle, still on his feet, but eventually forced out of bounds at the 37 yard line. And man, has legend Grigsby heated up this season. Six touchdowns on the year for number 22. Yeah, and we talked about it on one of the broadcasts earlier this year the fact that this trio shares the action totes the rock pretty evenly they're pretty similar when you look at them from a stature perspective all about 510 511 170 180 pounds you don't have a big physical bruiser in the backfield at any point in time but Grigsby stands out just because of his sheer speed and his ability after the catch because of it it'll be second down and six horn Going to go deep, it's incomplete. Intended for B.J. Rainey, but the center secondary going to force third down. Yeah, and Rainey coming free out of the slot right there. Not sure who was lined up over the top of him, but he has tremendous speed, and he had his man beat. He just had to come back to the football, and that allowed for what looks to be number 19 for the Colonels. I think one of their linebackers to come through and disrupt that pass. Safety Caleb Jones there on that stop. It'll be third down and six. Horn wide open. Caleb Crawford pass midfield down at the 47 yard line and it's another third down conversion for Trinity. Yeah, and it looks like this is another play where Trinity runs some of those outside receivers off the line, and one of those underneath guys is left just wide open. I think they tried to do the same thing a couple plays ago on that screen pass into the boundary. So it'll be first down and 10 at the 46. Give up the middle, and nowhere to go for Carmouche. She's brought down for a gain of one. Frankly, this center box has done a really, really nice job of stopping the run this afternoon. Again, no huge gash plays from this trio of Tiger running backs. But on the flip side, this secondary hasn't really found any answers to stopping the air attack. Tucker Horn on time, in rhythm. I think if this defensive box can step up and maybe get some pressure on him, It'll certainly help out that secondary. Quickly to Merrifield. Merrifield dragged down inside the 35, and that's going to be enough for another Tiger first down. Again, we see that it's not just one guy on the outside running routes and catching the ball. And you see a nice little screen action right here to Ryan Merrifield, but it was E.J. Rainey, who left your screen, number 10, who was engaged on that block on the outside, freed up Merrifield just enough to get the yardage for the first down right there. Just great perimeter blocking from everyone in this wide receiver core so far this season. Another strong drive for the Tigers. Play action. Horn going deep. It's caught! They're going to mark him just short, but it's Ryan Merrifield again. 
He does pretty much everything. You throw the ball to Ryan Merrifield, he's going to find a way to haul it in. This one, maybe the most acrobatic that we've seen so far this year, turning over that shoulder, basically falling directly onto his back. The referees called him down at the one-yard line, but he was certainly close to breaking into the end zone as he was securing that football. Just an extraordinary grab by the fifth-year wide receiver. It looked like Ryan Merrifield got across the goal line. They mark him down at the one as the Tigers are going to burn their first time out. And we'll take a short break on Tiger Network. First and goal for Trinity when we come back. Luke Terry's got a wave to the camera next time. As it's first and goal for Trinity. 6.57 remaining in this second quarter. Horn under center. Play fake. Plenty of time. Horn trying to get to the edge, and he's just going to have to throw it away. They were looking for Caleb Crawford, and it'll bring up second and goal. Yeah, but ultimately, just a good decision to get rid of that football from Sucker Horn right there. Not trying to force it into the end zone himself. Don't want to subject your starting quarterback to any unnecessary hits. Still second and goal from inside the five, just around the two-yard line. So another couple of tries here. Second down and goal after the incompletion. They pitch it to Carmouche. Carmouche barreling. Did he get in? No. They're going to mark him at about the half yard line. So third down and goal as this center defense has made back-to-back -back stops. Yeah, and again, a wonderful job by this Trinity box. You look at that shot right there. It looks like he has a huge hole right off of number 88, Alex Steele. But instead, trying to go through the bodies of some of those defenders, I think he could have just snuck into the end zone if he had divin into one of those open spots. Hutchison diving it in for the touchdown. So third tries the charm as the Tigers get into the end zone. And now they're up 20 to nothing. But even on that one, some pretty good penetration from center. I think at that point, Inside the one yard line, you're expecting run all the way. They're selling out into those gaps, trying to wrap up the legs early. I think Hutchison did have his legs wrapped, but you mentioned he just dove forward into one of those empty slots, and it was enough to get him across the goal line. Nice job to finish that drive inside the five yard line, something that the Trinity offense struggled with a couple of times last week. Confetti flies and the extra point is good. It is 21 to nothing, Tigers with 6.08 remaining and you're gonna see the touchdown again. Great camera work here as well by our team. And yeah, just great job being able to dive forward for that one. Not sure which one that was. That might have been the Justin Carmouche run from a couple of plays ago because it didn't look like any of those Trinity offensive linemen were celebrating right there. Some of those center defensive linemen were signaling fourth down, but because that means it was that touchdown play. Couldn't tell whether Winston Hutchison got in at first. We thought Ryan Merrifield was in, then we thought Justin Carmouche was in, but third try is the charm as you'll see it again. That ball clearly over the plane. Put him up. It's the Tigers starting to pull away. And you get the sense that this is gonna be an important drive for center as they're about to get the football back. Everybody ready to go. As Huddle will send it away. 
Short kick, it'll be returned. Past the 15, got a lane. Gonna bring it to the 26 as the Tigers able to rally on the coverage team. So this center offense coming back out, they've had to punt four times. What's the key to avoiding that on this one? Well, I think the first couple of drives of the afternoon for the center offense, they looked really good. And I think that they came out really confidently. I think they were fired up and rallied behind that block field goal. Trinity defense is stout and stood up a couple of times. The last two times out on the field, I think they struggled, looked a little bit rattled. Timing was off. The snaps weren't good. I think if they can settle in and return to form what we saw those first couple of drives, they'll certainly have better success. But on top of that, you have to find ways to finish. And I think they need some just run after the catch or run after the initial contact explosive type plays. The running game's been good so far. Not a whole lot of plays been blown up. The offensive line's doing a nice job of getting some initial push. But if they can just get that little extra oomph and get – 5, 10, 15 yard plays instead of those 2, 3 yard gains then they're going to move the ball a lot quicker and have a lot more confidence as well Flag thrown on first down, it was a false start on center, so first down and 15 under pressure Goman escapes under more pressure, he's going to take it and run out of bounds as he gets it past the original line of scrimmage, it's going to be a gain of 6 we've got a player down, can't see who it is I think that's number 94, Amir Mustafa, who's helped to his feet and looks like he'll get off the field under his own power. Amir Mustafa coming off of an injury at the end of last season. Was able to come back in the Birmingham Southern game in week three, so good to see him walking off under his own power. As the center offense will get, into the, will get to the line, second down and 11 at their own 25 yard line, ticking down to 5.30 remaining in this half. Play action. Goman under pressure gets it away. And that's gonna be a center first down. That's Busen and he makes his first catch of the game. They'll take it to their own 40 yard line. And this is one thing that we have seen the center offense try multiple times and had some success with. Just getting Goman on the roll on these little play action rollouts, get them in space and try and take that defensive front and defensive box just out of the equation for Trinity. I think that those plays are so long developing that you're gonna have receivers find success and just settling into the zones is it's exactly what happened right there. Goldman under pressure, gets away. Still on his feet, throws across his body incomplete. Under constant duress on that play, several Tigers had a chance at him. It just feels like time and time again, Goman's seconds away, just inches away from going down in the backfield, He's putting on his best magician performance this afternoon, doing a great job of extending plays, staying up in the backfield. But he's coupled that with really good decision making, not forcing that one into any coverage right there. And you live to take a second and 10. This Tigers defense, one sack in three games. As that play going absolutely nowhere. That's Gabe Walker. He had 10 carries last week or two weeks ago against Barry. That's his first one of the day. We mentioned this Tigers defense, one sack in three games. So close to getting it just a few plays ago. Yeah, absolutely. Just great pursuit of the quarterback. That one, a little bit of a counter action that they, th I think they're trying to set up in tandem with those rollouts. That one just taking way too long to develop in this Trinity front, showing their speed and quickness to get off the line into the backfield there. Goman on third and long. Rolling out, trying to find somebody, anybody incomplete. Intended for Scotty Brown. There is a flag in the backfield, and we'll see what that's about. And usually when it's in that territory, it's holding. I've already seen Trinity decline one of these calls today. I would imagine on third down it would be the same decision, but we'll await the call here. 
So number 60, Tyler Vaughn pointing. Not sure if it would be on him. Also saw a little bit of post-play discussion with the officials from number 74. That's going to be Max uh, Hafine. Yeah, not sure who it was, but confirmed holding on that play and confirmed Trinity declining that one in favor of fourth down. But it was another play where Goman rolled out, kind of turned into a scramble drill. And I think one thing that this unit offensively isn't doing incredibly well right now is that scramble drill. Offensive receivers just getting too close. And they run a fake punt, and it's going to work! Down the sideline, past the 40, and just the break center needed. The winds were not in their favor, but they might be now. The guts from Coach Andy Fry to pull the, the play out of the playbook. Yeah. And it works out brilliantly for center. You talk about guts. That's a really gutsy play on a fourth and about 12 right there. Usually you see those when... You want that up back going straight through the line of scrimmage, only in need of one or two yards. That time had to get around the outside for 12. Coleman going deep incomplete. There was a chance. That was Belitter, the intended target. And it'll be second down, trying to get it all back in one play. Yeah, and that one, one of the first deep balls that we've seen really in the middle of the field. That's where Trinity got beat last week at Barry. So this offense trying to expose that. Go back to what I was saying a couple of moments ago, those scramble drills, the receivers just running themselves too far into the sideline. Goman with not large enough windows to fit that ball in. So instead going over the top on that last throw. Pitch to the outside. And gonna gain a few. It'll be a three yard play as we tick to about three minutes remaining in this half. Trinity's been doing such a great job of stopping plays at the line and also occasionally stopping runs uh, at or behind the line, but it's just been such a big problem with sacks. This has been a relatively low sack season. Haven't gotten a sack in a while, or at least not any uh, big sack games like we're used to, uh, especially after last year. So they've done a good job of limiting big plays, but it's just been so difficult to get the quarterback down on the ground. Third and eight. Goldman caught. Foose again inside the 20, and center moves the chains all the way to the red zone. And again, going to your big target. Last time Foose was targeted, took that big hit from the safety. This time, no one really near him in the middle of the field. A huge weak spot in the Trinity defense right there. Just settled right at the line to gain. And Goman able to find his big target for the first down. Give to Walker. Walker powering, but nowhere to go. Gain of one on the play as this clock continues to tick down. And if center has it their way, they'll score with no time left. And it would be a big score if you could get on the board with the Tigers only scoring 21 points in this first half. Important to note that one of those came on that punt return. So not the offense that we saw clicking at Barry last week. But thinking about that play just a couple of moments ago to, to throw to your tight end. Couple that with the play where they went over the top and barely missed in the end zone. It just opens the field, stretched it a little bit so that they could find that throw in order to pick up the first down. Goldman runs that one out of bounds. It looks like he's going to take a loss as it'll stop the clock with 109 remaining in the half. This is a center team that is not giving up without a fight. Even though their record may not indicate it, this is still a good team. Their very last game before a bye week uh, last week did go down to overtime. So this is a team that has a lot of fight in it. Despite the record that may not be so good, they, or, or they definitely do not go down easy. That game against Rhodes three weeks ago went to triple overtime, able to get the win. Third down and 12, quickly has some space. It's Belitter, takes it down inside the 20, but nowhere near the sticks. 
And you would assume that center is going to send the field goal unit out. Looks like they're trotting on the field now. It looks like they're coming on the field now. We'll have to see what Coach Urban's going to elect to do. As time's continuing to tick away here. Looks like they will go ahead and take the timeout. So they'll get the ball back, likely with 40 or so seconds remaining in the half once we see the result of this kick. That'll be Trinity's second timeout. They'll have one remaining and a little over 40 seconds, you would assume. If the field goal's good, factoring some kickoff time, that's what they'll have to work down into field goal range. But we know what Huddle can do. He made a 52-yard field goal against Barry last week. Yeah, and I know something that we talked about yesterday and coming into this game, just trying to get Huddle into positions where you can truly test that range. I think we have some interesting circumstances in San Antonio today. The wind has picked up a little bit. It looks like it's blowing from north to south, maybe a little bit to the west as well. So that will be at the back of the Colonels right here as Teggy comes on to attempt this field goal. It's definitely going to make uh, a potential huddle field goal towards the end of this quarter a lot more difficult if they even get into that position. This kick will be from, let's do the math, 36 yards out. Teggy's made some big field goals this season. He's 5 of 7. That's good for 71%. He has a long of 43. Family weekend crowd starting to get loud here, trying to distract him as much as possible. From 36. On its way... Got it. So center gets on the board for the first time today. It's 21 to three with 46 seconds remaining in the half. Yeah, and a great kick from Teggy right there. Straight down the upright, splitting them down the middle with plenty of leg to spare. Get a great angle of it right there. That one would have been good from another 10 or so yards out maybe. Skewed a little bit off to the left more than I had originally thought. Couldn't see it from our angle in the booth, but great camera work down in the end zone. But a lot of time left for an offense that can move it really quickly, especially considering they have a couple of timeouts. A great opportunity to just run that hurry up. It's just situational football right here in game. Shout out to our moving cameraman, Reed Rosales, for that shot as he's getting a workout in, walking from end zone to end zone in this half. So center will kick for the first time in quite some time. 46 seconds, one timeout for Trinity. We'll see what they can do. As that kick, directional and caught out of bounds. This will be interesting. And it looks like they're going to spot this at the two-yard line. Yeah, and just a little bit of a mental lapse right there. It looks like Trinity went ahead and made some replacements on that kickoff. It had some different returners back there. At that time, it was number 81, Cam Heron, a freshman out of Abilene who caught that one, secured the football right at the sideline boundary, and then stepped out. So a little bit of added pressure, added pressure here for the Trinity offense, not just a hurry-up offense situation, but also about 99 yards to gain if they want to put some additional points on the field. So that could change things. 21-3, to three, still 46 seconds remaining in this half. The scoreboard says two timeouts, but we're pretty confident that it's only the one. Saw a flag just get thrown on the field from the back judge. Excuse me, the field ref. 
I think the play clock had hit zero, but they had to bump it back up, so they won't be backed up any further already inside their five. Give up the middle. Hutchison is... He fights ahead to the four, and I think that shows a little bit of what the Tigers are thinking in terms of strategy. Yeah, and it looks like Tucker Horn's making his way over towards the sideline. I think another timeout was called here. That time by center. So Andy Fry recognizing the mental mistake that was made by the Trinity special team unit. Understanding in the shadow of their own end zone, the Tigers almost forced to run the ball for a couple of consecutive plays. Able to pick up positive yardage on that first one, but still a second and long. Likely another running scenario here. If you can get it. Yeah, absolutely. Now 35 seconds left in the half. That one taking a little bit more time to develop. Not something that we see this offense do a whole lot. Ryan Merrifield dragging kind of across the face of the secondary. He was coming free into space, but that's a 20, 25 yard throw downfield as a guy's moving east and west instead of north and south trying to run under something. Give up the middle. Carmouche tries to bounce to the outside, but he's going to be stopped short. So that worked exactly how center wanted. You would assume that they're going to take a timeout now, which they will. 29 seconds remaining in the half, and they're going to get the football back with a timeout to spare. Yeah, a really interesting shift here in San Antonio. Trinity really totally controlling this game. And then just one error like that can totally flip the script. You're put in an uncomfortable situation think they controlled it the best they could right there but obviously a situation in which center was set up to be more successful able to get the three and out force the punt now they just have to see if they can capitalize and put some more points onto the board Eli Gaiman set to kick this one away he had a 52 yard punt last week he's got some room to spare in his end zone As this one nearly blocked, able to get it away. Fair catch called at the 43-yard line, so that's where center will take over. We mentioned that Teggy's long 43 yards on the season, and they're not that far away from it. Yeah, but after that shift in momentum, I wouldn't be surprised to see center come out and air the ball out again. Had Billiter over the middle into the end zone on their last possession or a couple of possessions ago. Goman just minch, missing him by a matter of a couple of inches, a couple of feet at most. Wouldn't be surprised if they test it again. We'll see Goman operating now in an empty set with five receivers. 22 seconds, one timeout for center. Goman quickly, that's going to be caught. Scotty Brown still going inside the 30-yard line. And we'll see how center wants to play this, whether they run up to the line or call timeout now. And it looks like they will do the latter. 15 seconds, they'll have it at the 30-yard line. Yeah, and with as much leg as Teggy had on that 37-so yard attempt, I wouldn't be surprised to see them just take a couple of shots here at the end zone. I think if they were to snap the ball from this spot, they would be looking at I guess a 47 yarder it seemed like he had the distance on it it would just be a matter of placing it through the uprights but the after burning that last time out you never want to run the risk of the ball being down short of the sticks and the clock continuing to run because with 15 seconds it's a pretty tall task at this level to get everyone out onto the field get your kicker set get the ball snapped and kicked through the uprights 
the wind definitely has picked up, so that would help a potential field goal here. But also, you've got to think about it. Without that kick return touchdown, this is a 14 to three game. Could or a, or it could have been 14 10 if that end zone shot worked out. So this is still a relatively close game. We saw the center fans in attendance hoping that they can add on to this 21 to three score. Goldman, plenty of time, just gonna throw it away. Wise move by the sophomore quarterback. Yeah, I think coming out in this spread offense empty set with those five receivers really just indicates what you're trying to do. Trinity gonna drop everyone into coverage. Obviously, Trey King on the outside, one of the best corners in the conference, one of the best corners in the entire country and he's joined by a really stout secondary, but he's also joined by some linebackers who have great speed and can take and handle their fair share of coverage responsibilities as well. Nine seconds remaining. Under pressure, Goman has to spin away. Gonna launch it to the end zone. It is incomplete, but the clock is at zero. And it looks like that'll be the end of the first half. The play took too long and center gets nothing. Yeah, I think that's the risk here at the end of the half. A young, inexperienced quarterback choosing to prolong that play instead of just throwing it away when he's pressured at first. Nine seconds wasn't a ton of time to begin with. A nice job of rolling out and understanding that Hey, the clock at this point is probably dead. There's probably zeros. Let me take a shot. He put that one in a dangerous spot into the end zone, kind of at the back, gave his receivers a chance, but a nice job by that Trinity secondary of batting that one out of, ba out of bounds, excuse me, and going into the halftime with this 21 to three lead. So the Tigers will walk off the field, an 18 point lead intact. You see the first half stats on your screen. As we're gonna roll some highlights here. As we'll let you enjoy that, we'll take a break on Tiger Network. Halftime in San Antonio. Trinity leads 21 to three.
And welcome back for the second half on Tiger Network. Trinity leading center 21 to 3. And I would say a much closer game than a lot of people expected. A lot of that, centers kept the football. Definitely, yeah. Time of possession is one of the most important things whenever it comes to dominating and just staying in a football game. And center has done a really good job of that. Taking a lot of time off the clock that Trinity could have used to score points. This is a very quick strike offense, but even with those quick possessions, it's still difficult to get a lot of possessions if center is taking, you know, five, six, seven minutes per possession. Yeah, a big part of that, controlling the football. They've controlled time of possession in favor of center, almost 18 minutes to 12 in that first half. So well over 50% for the Colonels. But another big part of it is that they took care of the football outside of the ball ending up on the turf because of some bad snaps over the head of the quarterback, which, you know, you look at this stat sheet that we got at halftime, it reads that the Colonels had four fumbles. I was a bit perplexed for a second, and then I realized it was just those bad snaps. But you see Goman on your screen there, 8 of 17, 64 yards, doesn't jump off the screen but he's taking care of the football. He's made good decisions. He's recovered the ball when it's been on the ground. Hasn't forced it. Everyone who has caught a pass, who has carried the football, has taken care of it. And another aspect that we've talked about is they haven't been behind the sticks a ton. A couple of times where they've gone backwards. But they've picked up a lot of first downs. They haven't had that many three and outs, so they've been able to consistently flip the field. And this Trinity offense hasn't taken advantage of shorter fields like we're so often used to seeing them do. Had a blocked kick early in the game, as special teams has played a large part in the score. Upon return for a touchdown, several important plays throughout this one. 21-3 to as we're about to get rolling in this second half. Trinity kicked off to open the game, so they'll receive and a good chance to extend their lead and what could be an important drive, considering this is only an 18-point game. And with that, we are underway in the second half of action. A short kick, as this one will be brought back by Heron. Heron, past the 20, he's got a lane. Heron, past the 40. Brought down at the 44-yard line and a good start to the Tigers in the second half. We've got a flag back at about the 20. Not sure what was going on there. There was a Tiger slow to get up, so not sure if this is going to be on center or on Trinity. We're going to get a look here. Normally you would expect this to be coming back, and that is the indication. would assume a block in the back or a hold of some kind, and the return will be nullified. Yeah, and it looked like there was a little bit of traffic on the right side of your screen right there. I think you're spot on, Cole. Block in the back that will force the Trinity offense to march back inside their own 10 to start this drive. So very similar to what we saw at the end of the first half. If they want to put points up here, they're going to have to march all the way down the field. Last week, again, two weeks ago against Barry, center had an 80-yard kickoff return that got called back in the first half. Part of the reason that game got out of hand. Here's a give, and there's a lane. Tripped up to about the 20 yard line as Hutchison as the Tigers have a good first down play. One thing we've gotten so used to seeing from this Trinity team on both sides of the football are just great adjustments being made by the coaching staff at halftime. Last week at Barry, it was really defensive minded where the adjustments came. Gave up a ton, a ton of points in that first half, but limited that Vikings offense, which has been great all year, to just eight. But this offense putting up just 14 in the first half, certainly going to have some things to fix here. Horn on second and one, throws to Hutchison, but he's decked behind the line of scrimmage. So a good play for center to force third down. And Hutchison gets up pretty quickly, but he rolled over, and I can assure you he felt that one. You see that Tucker Horn put that one behind him, forced to twist and come back to the ball. But it was a nice play by Joseph Becker, who was stepping up to fill there, took advantage of that turn by the running back and delivered a big hit. Nice job from Hutchison to hold on to that football, but still third and short scenario here. 
Third and two, the Tigers the second best third down offense in the country. Horn over the middle, that's gonna be caught. B.J. Rainey dives and reels it in, and the Tigers will move the chains. Yeah, B.J. Rainey doing a nice job going down to the ground just to ensure that he secures that football. You mentioned a third and two. Great job from the slot receiver, understanding the down and distance, knowing that if he just secures that football, it's going to keep the chains moving, keep the offense on the field. So first down as this Trinity opening drive of the half will continue. Down at their own 27. Play fake Horn under immediate pressure. He's going to get away. Horn just going to throw that one out of bounds and live to see another down. And that time, a breakdown in the protection. It looked like there was a play fake as B.J. Rainey went in motion. And it was the running back, Winston Hutchison, stepping up, but also stepping out to pick up that pressure was that left guard Santi Bowman and it left one of those interior linemen for the Colonels unblocked. Tucker Horn having to scramble a little bit and ultimately throw that one away. Second and 10 from the 21 after the incompletion. It'll be a give. He's got space. Hutchinson lowers his shoulder past the 40, brought down past the sticks, and it'll be a Tiger first down. One very interesting thing to note, uh, going way back so far in this drive, now uh, already a bit under three minutes down in the drive, but uh, the penalty on the kickoff return was actually Trinity's first of the game, and Trinity has kind of struggled a little bit so far this season with penalties, but doing a pretty good job so far here today of avoiding those. First down at the 40-yard line. Play action. Plenty of time. Horn down the sideline incomplete. Nobody open intended for Carter, intended not for Carter self, Caleb Crawford. Yeah, and Trinity coming back after what was definitely the most successful running play of the afternoon. A couple of snaps ago, Winston Hutchison able to pick up a full 10 yards plus for the first down. Offense responding quickly, trying to go over the top, but that time just not enough downfield action. Tucker Horn forced to throw that one into the center sideline. Second down. Horn going deep again. This time it's caught. Went right back to Caleb Crawford, and he has it down at the 30-yard line. This one, just a great touch. Came out maybe a little bit wobbly, but Carter Self, again, showing great concentration. He had that defender bearing down in his face. It looked like it was number six for the Colonels. Again, Joseph Becker, whose name we've already called on this drive. Carter Self just spinning starting to backpedal a little bit to create that separation from the linebacker. A really tough coverage in space for someone playing in the box for the Colonel's defense. The play to Self takes him down to the 33. Under pressure, Horn is going to run for it. He's got some yardage, takes a big hit at the 25, but he gets up okay, and it'll bring up second down. Yeah, just swung down there at the end of that play. Hits the ground a little bit hard, but you mentioned gets up. Looks like he's fine. We'll continue on this drive without really any hesitation. Looked like they were trying to run another double move with Ryan Merrifield at the top of the field, getting him breaking back out towards the sideline, but that one better covered by the Colonel's defense. This will be a give to the legend of Grigsby. Grigsby fighting for the first down marker. He's not going to quite get there. And it'll be third down and one. Grisby so far has been, I think, just looking at the stats on paper, definitely the best running back so far of this three-headed monster that Trinity has been running. And, and that three-headed monster is really allowing every single running back to get plenty of rest and be really fresh for basically every play. This drive's already lasted five minutes. Third and one. 
They'll throw. Plenty of time to the end zone. Caught! Touchdown, Trinity! Who else would it be? Ryan Merrifield adding another one. He's got a touchdown in three straight weeks, and the Tigers have a touchdown to open the second half. And it's not very frequently that you're going to see Ryan Merrifield get single coverage outside all by himself, but that's exactly what happened there. We talked about him with Coach Urban yesterday, and Coach Urban called him arguably the best wide receiver in the history of the program. <laughs> That's high praise coming from a guy that played here, went to a national championship, and went on to have a pretty successful career in the NFL. But he says that Merrifield has just such a great combination of size, speed, quickness. He can win jump balls in the air, but he's also just a great route runner. So in single coverage like this, he's going to make guys pay with his footwork. It's exactly what happens here. Fakes to the inside, wins to the outside, and had so much room that he was able to stop and come back to that ball just a little bit. But as you mentioned, that was an opening drive that took over five minutes off the clock, bled it just a little bit, and went straight down the field to get the score and extend this lead to 28-3. to Maybe a little bit more indicative of how things have gone so far. Extra point by Huddle is good, and it makes it 28-3. to that's Ryan Merrifield's seventh touchdown in the past three games. And Luke, you uh, you mentioned the fact uh, that Coach Urban gave Ryan Merrifield praise. Tucker Horn also gave him a lot of praise. Said that Ryan was just a great player at obviously the big things of catching and running, but also the little things like footwork, leverage, technique, and it's just he seems like the complete package so far. The lead is swelled to 25 for Trinity. They get the opening drive touchdown they wanted, having deferred to start the game. Drive takes just over five minutes as Huddle will send it back to center, and they have some work to do. Short kick. Takes it past the 10, past the 20. A good return out of bounds at around the 30, and that is where the Colonels are going to take over. Looks like it could have been a block in the back there on, I think that was Caleb Crawford, uh, the recipient of that. Uh, either that or the first-year defensive back, Delvin Gant. Uh, looks like there was a pretty hard hit there in the pursuit, but no flag was called. Had a little bit of a conversation with the official afterwards there just behind the huddle. Everything said and done. Center will take the ball at their own 29 with a big hole to dig out of. As Jack Goman has some work to do. Goman quickly too high and incomplete. And one thing I would love to see from this Colonel offense in the second half is just lengthening the leash a little bit for Goman. Talked about the fact that this is a team that's seen some quarterback competition. Goman in that first half was really incredibly impressive for someone that lacks a lot of experience. I mean, he, he's played so far early this season, but he's split time. I think the decision-making was great, extending plays, taking care of the football, but that time... Goman's going to go down, Caleb Harmel. And we talked about the Tigers not being able to get sacks. Well, there's their first one of the game. You talk about the Tigers not being able to get sacks. That time, they make sure that they get some guys home, bringing great speed by bringing extra guys from that linebacker unit. It was Caleb Harmel that will get credited for the solo sack right there. Number 21 for the Tigers, the All-American. But right there by his side was number 24, Ryan Arnold, who's been equally as impressive this season in that linebacker core. So it'll be third and 21. Goldman steps up, and the ball is loose. And this time, Trinity definitely fell on it. Jacob Munoz able to scoop up the fumble, and the Tigers will take over in the red zone. And that's what was missing in that first half was the takeaways shortening the field for this offense. I don't think that one was forced out. It looked like it was Caleb Harmel stepping up to try and make the tackle, and Goman and trying to change direction had that one just slip out of his mitt 
hit the ground. And as you mentioned, Jacob Munoz is doing a nice job of jumping on top of it, making sure that they secure the football that time around like they were unable to do so in the first half. Jacob Munoz already had a forced fumble on the season out of fumble recovery as he cradled that thing like a baby. It'll be first and 10 in the red zone down at the 17-yard line. Play action. Horn finding time, throwing incomplete. That one intended for Caleb Crawford. It'll bring up second down. Yeah, and that one being run into the boundary. So Horn being pressured a little bit, ultimately able to get away from it, step and play on that back foot, but running that play into the sideline just constrains the field. The receiver is not with enough space to open up and find a hole in the defense, so Tucker ultimately forced to just throw it away. Here's a flip to Carmouche. Trying to fight for some yardage. He maybe gets past the line of scrimmage, but driven down at about the 16-yard line. And quickly, it's third and long for Trinity. And again, just inside the red zone. So the field is constrained a little bit. You see them like to hit that home run ball over the top, use Ryan Merrifield in that capacity. But in the shortened field, things certainly change up in the playbook. And right now, Ryan Merrifield not on the field. Third down and 10. Down inside the red zone. We mentioned it earlier, one of the best third down teams in the country. Horn, gonna step up. We'll see if he runs. He will not. Still looking for somewhere to go with the ball. Flips it incomplete. Nobody open, just throws it away. And it looks like there's some extracurriculars down on the field. Yeah, and it looked like Tucker got away pretty safely, ultimately electing to throw that one away out of bounds. But despite that, after the play, he found himself on the turf. I'd love to see a replay of that last one, see if we can get an understanding of what happened at the sideline. There were some... Shouts in the crowd yelling for a flag to be thrown. I think he might have taken a, lot, a late hit there as there were some members of that support staff having to hold him back as the Colonels were headed back across the field. In the meantime, it'll be a Tyler Huddle field goal on fourth and eight. As this kick on the way, and it is good. So Trinity able to extend the lead 31-3. to three. And we'll see if we can find what happened on that last play. Yeah, so it rolled out. Looked like that linebacker was spying him right there, step for step. That little shutter right there got him off him originally. Throws the ball away. That one's gone. Gets a little bit of a shove in the back. Maybe not too late, but certainly when it happens right in front of the sideline, that Trinity group, not going to be a group of happy campers. Let the Colonel defense hear it a little bit. Wanted the referees to throw the flag there, but ultimately Trinity walking away with three points, able to extend that lead a little bit more. Typically, whenever a quarterback gets uh, hit or pushed a little bit late, you, of course, see the offensive lineman uh, going to kind of push and shove back a little bit, but also it is pretty rare, as I think this is going to be another angle here that we can see. It's pretty rare, and oh, yeah. That that makes sense as to why the uh, the sideline was a little bit upset, but uh, afterwards uh, you could see the staff trying to hold Tucker back. So so uh, Tucker definitely not afraid to kind of get his own hands a little bit dirty in his own defense. Tucker Horn, a fiery competitor, as Huddle sends this one. Going to be a pretty short kick, caught at about the twelve yard line. Trying to weave through some tackles. Ultimately going to be brought down at the 26 and center after that turnover. Trinity able to cash in, get the touchdown. It's 31-3 to now, a completely different game than when this half started. Yeah, and when we opened the half or when center opened the half on offense, that last possession, I had said that maybe giving Goman a little bit more 
of the leash, a little bit more room to operate here would be a good thing. And I think that's what we saw there was a little bit more of the decision making in his hands, again, trying to extend the play and the ball ultimately finds the turf eventually, the announcer's curse, as we so lovingly refer to it. But I think that's just a growing pain, honestly. And he's back out there because it's not that big of a mistake in a game that was already 28-3. to It's going to happen. You're going to hit bumps like that. You have to be able to respond to those as well. And that's what's going to be important right here on this drive. Really competitive up through the start of this half, that first Trinity drive to have this game, a 21-3 scoreline at the break. We saw Goman really successful in that first half. Let's see if he can respond even after that mistake there. Looks like there was a penalty on the Tigers based on how much they moved it up, probably offsides on the kickoff. So center will have it at the 32 now. As a give up the middle to McDaniel. And that'll be about a gain of two. Um, this is really a do or die drive here for center because down this much with a little bit over seven minutes to go in the third quarter, they are really running out of time to try and put together. It's a 28 point gap right now, so that's four possessions at least. You really, really need to get something going here if you are the Colonels. Second down and eight. He'll flip it out wide. It's McDaniel trying to get into some space, but nowhere to go. As Tyson Cornett able to bring him down. Tigers saying they have the football. But it looks like they're going to say McDaniel was out of bounds or down. We'll see it on the replay. Yeah, I couldn't really see from our angle in the booth. It was Casey Ooh. Hampton who came in and knocked that one out. But Johnny Kusa had already really stopped his forward progress. But there was no knee down from that shot. What great camera work right there. And a great job from Casey Hampton to come in and punch that ball out. Looked like the line judge was right on top of that one, but missed that call, frankly. It's possible that his feet were out of bounds there as well. That might be why they blew it dead. Either way, it's third and nine. Under pressure. Rolling out again across his body. It's caught. That's going to be a flag on Quinn McDermott, quite possibly defensive pass interference. I don't think that there was any offensive shoving there, and Quinn never got his head turned around. Scotty Brown able to make the catch, and we'll see what the call is. Well, that's going to be offensive or defensive pass interference. It looks like this one's going against Trinity. And that one just lofted into the air right there, a little bit underthrown. And I think that creates a lot of the contact more often than not. The receiver trying to come back through that defensive back. But as you mentioned, Caleb, a good job in pointing out McDermott never getting his head turned around. Contact might have been forgivable if he had been fighting with the receiver for the ball. But I think he just wasn't aware that it was coming and impeded that offensive player's progress. First down, taking a shot to the end zone. It is tipped and incomplete. Tigers had a shot to intercept that ball, but it looks like it hit the ground. It'll be second and 10. Yeah, Johnny Cusa doing his best acting performance possible, trying to convince the referees that he came away with this one. I think it was Casey Hampton that was there. You can see both the defensive back and the receiver playing that one as it hung in the air for a long time. And that ball did hit the ground. A great look at that from our crew. Intended target was Christian Billiter. And so it'll be third down and 10, or second and 10, I should say. McDaniel up the middle. And not going to get very far, only a gain of one. I was going to say that, um, at least before the really big play, uh, to set up this uh, drive starting at the 30, but before this drive, I was going to say Trinity's defense has really done a great job of locking down center. Of course, uh, the turnover on, or on the last drive, really great job, but now they really have to step up here and essentially ice this game. Third down and nine at the Tiger 30. Gilman flips it. McDaniel's going to be short. 
A convoy of tigers, including James O'Gunran, able to bring him down. And now a decision for center on fourth and short. What a nice little play taken out of the book right there. Letting everyone in that defensive line get up field. Let that hole open up straight down the middle. And just a nice little flip. It's an easy completion. It's going to allow you to get some easy yardage as everyone drops back into coverage. And then it allows you a fourth and short opportunity here. Makes it a lot more manageable to try and go for it. Fourth down and three. Throws to the sideline. That's going to be caught. Scotty Brown's come up with a lot of big catches today. None bigger than that. As they'll take it at about the 15-yard line of Trinity. You'll see Scotty Brown with that arm sleeve right there. Left your view pretty early on. He was climbing from the slot. Caleb Harmel picked him up in coverage, but he had a full head of steam. About six, seven yard sim on that, and then a straight sprint to the sideline. Harmel, a very fast linebacker, but just unable to match that top speed. Goman, end zone, incomplete, too high. We've got a flag at the line. Might be offsides on Trinity here since they didn't call the play dead. And that's the indication we're getting. So a free five yards for Jack Goman in this offense as they took the end zone shot on the free play. And on plays like that, I mean, why not go for it? If it works, you get a score. If not, you still gain yards. So great heads up play there. Not sure if that was the original play call or not, but any time that there's an offsides call, never hurts to take a shot and go for it. Under four minutes remaining in the third quarter in a 28-point hole. Center needs this. Goldman under pressure. Rolling out. End zone incomplete. As he was going for the running back, Keaton Martin. It'll be second and goal from the five. The thing about this possession is that it's the first time Sinner has entered the red zone this afternoon. They were able to get some points on the board with that field goal kicked in the first half, but they haven't dealt with this short field, and it's what's this Trinity defense has really excelled at all season long. They have that bend, don't break mentality that gets talked about a lot. They're willing to let you drive, but so long as you don't get into the end zone for six, they're going to walk away happy with it, and that's what they're trying to do right here. Play clock down to three. They do get it off. Goman throws one to the end zone and complete. As Billiter was the intended target once again, now it's third and goal. We've got a hat down in the end zone, not entirely. That probably means that he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, just the official making sure that it's noted he stepped in or out of bounds, excuse me, in case he was to come back in bounds. But all the momentum from those center receivers headed towards the back of the end zone. Again, rolled that play fake, tried to get. Goman rolling out to his really either side all afternoon, but that time Mac Douglas was in hot pursuit of him. Third and goal. Time. End zone. Tipped in and complete. You and mentioned the momentum out of the back of the end zone. That's the problem with these really short yardage red zone plays. Whenever you're back at like the 15, the 20, it's a lot easier to kind of set up a play, but whenever you're at the five, things are a lot more compressed and it's a lot more difficult to get everybody running routes to where they can be open. And also it's a lot less space for Trinity defense to have to cover. And so arguably getting in from the five is harder than getting in from say like the 15 or the 20, just because of how much space you have to work with. Fourth and goal. Goldman fading back, it is incomplete in the Tigers' hold. Four tries from the four-yard line, and center can't cash in. Trinity takes over. And much of this second half, we've seen Goldman just throwing off of his back foot. It was a nice job of Ryan Arnold right there, trying to climb the receiver to go up and high point that football. Ultimately, probably the better result is he might have been down inside the one-yard line there, but Goman, as we mentioned, throwing off that back foot, 
pressured a ton here in the second half, and it's because this Trinity defensive front is bringing help from that linebacker core. That time it was James Gunren who won in those A-gaps and was right in his face almost immediately. We talk all the time about Caleb Harmel, but Ryan Arnold, one of the unsung heroes on this defense, this is a give up the middle and not going to get very far. Maybe a gain of three on first down. That's Winston Hutchinson on the handle. Trinity doing an excellent job of just trying not to get too greedy here. Obviously, they have the lead, but just taking whatever they can get up the middle, trying to basically get enough space to not be in threat of falling back into their own end zone here. Really smart play calling here by the Tigers, just trying to keep the ball. Second down and six inside their own ten. Under three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Give to Hutchison. Hutchison towards the sideline, and he's going to have the first down. One thing that we've seen this afternoon is maybe a little bit more of an imbalance in the way that they've chosen to run the football. I think I've seen a lot more runs go between the tackles. That time, Hutchison getting a carry, taking it outside around that right end. Things opened up just enough for him to pick up that first down. So the Tigers able to get out of the shadow of their own goalposts. As another give to Hutchinson. Cutting up the middle, and that's a decent gain as he falls forward past the 20-yard line at the 21. After that handoff, Tucker did a really good job of selling the read option fake there. Uh, almost shoot the defender out of his shoes before, or, uh, before the defender realized that Tucker didn't have the ball there, but just amazing job by Tucker, just being committed to the play, even though necessarily the play doesn't revolve around him, just trying to distract the defense as much as possible. Ten seconds on the play clock. It's second and five. Horn swings it out. And that's Grigsby trying to make a move, and he's going to be brought down around... The 24-yard line, maybe a gain of two. It'll bring up third down. And also one thing to note, Trinity has come out of this uh, halftime break a lot better than they did to start the game. And that is something that we have seen a lot so far this season. It's something that we saw last week in Barrie. And that's something that Coach Urban talked to us about yesterday. And it's just something that this team does really, really well with those halftime adjustments, trying to figure out exactly what works and what doesn't and how to fix what doesn't. Outscored center, 14-0 in this second half. Horn to the sideline, caught by Merrifield. Breaks a tackle. Merrifield cuts back in bounds, and he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Who else would they go to on third down but Ryan Merrifield as the Tigers move the chains? You talk about the hands, you talk about the speed, the quickness. We talked about the route running, but another thing displayed here is just the run after catch ability. It's set up a little bit by the route, that outbreaking route, but he puts his foot in the ground well to set his momentum back towards the inside. Makes that first defender miss, gets a couple of extra yards after that first contact. Just a great play from Merrifield right there. Play action, horn incomplete, nobody there. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication as that falls incomplete with two seconds remaining in the quarter. Yeah, that one out of his hand rather quickly, and I think you're probably right. It looked like it was B.J. Rainey running a little bit of a bubble route from the slot, had his hands up in the air after that one sailed towards the center sideline, so certainly not on the same page with his quarterback. This will in all likelihood be the last play of the third quarter. Horn over the middle, incomplete. Horn took a big hit on that play as Merrifield couldn't quite haul it in. And that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. Trinity leads 31-3 to as they've opened things up here in the second half. We'll be back for the fourth on Tiger Network.
here we go. And welcome back for fourth quarter action on Tiger Network. Trinity leading 31 to three as they'll have third and 10 after the incompletion to end the third quarter. Looks like we still have the starters in for this one. It's Horn. Plenty of time. Rolling out, trying to make something happen. And he's going to go down. Nobody open downfield, and he just has to take that one. And for the second time today, Trinity will be forced to punt. Yeah, and he chose originally to break the pocket to the far side of the field rather than stepping up. And I think once you get outside, things really start to unravel pretty quickly from there. He came back to the middle of the field, but just had too much in pursuit as a result of the original breaking of the pocket. So Eli Gaiman on the punt as he gets this one away, a high kick. And it's gonna be muffed. Ball on the ground, still loose. Who's got it? It looked like a center player may have fallen on it. And that is exactly what happened as they will maintain the football. But another special teams gaffe by the center Colonels. We've talked a little bit about the wind here in San Antonio. Mentioned at the end of the first half that it's blowing from north to south. So behind the back of Gaiman who just sent that one towards the south end zone. But it's also blowing just a little bit from east to west. So that's why it got pushed to the near side of the field. Returner just kept drifting and drifting and couldn't ever get fully underneath that one. That's one that you just don't want to try and field at all. Let it bounce instead of muffing it. Play action and a play to Erie, but he's brought down. Caleb Harmel, as you said, Caleb, these starters still in the game. Yeah, I mean, this is just a fantastic defense. Of course, you know, we could talk for a full hour about Caleb Harmel just by himself. There is a flag in the end zone, a correction on that last play. That was Mays who made the catch, one of the tight ends on this Colonels team. And it looks like we're going to get a roughing call on Trinity, so that'll be an automatic first down for center. Yeah, and there was a lot of pressure in the face right off the bat. That's what caused the throw to the just underneath crossing route. Have to see a replay to see exactly what happened. Maybe just some unnecessary driving into the ground. But unfortunate for the Trinity defense, that one backs the Colonels, or excuse me, moves the Colonels out of the shadow of their end zone. This will be a give up the middle. And a decent gain on first down as they'll give him four. That's Will McDaniel on the carry. Trinity so far today has done their best to avoid penalties. It's kind of ramped up here in the second half. Uh, didn't have any in the first half. But hopefully they'll be able to kind of keep it down just a little bit. Of course, penalties have been a struggle for them so far a lot this season. And obviously something that coaches hate. Goldman gunning it for the sideline. That's going to be caught. Billiter making the catch and keeping the feet in. Center moves the chains. And that one, the best throw from Goman all afternoon. Rolls just to his right a little bit, sets and fires all the way across the field to that far sideline. Really impressive. I think a lot of that first half was spent rolling all the way to the sideline. Plays just taking forever to develop. Instead, he sets his foot in the ground, plants, throws, delivers a bullet to the sideline. A great, great throw from the young quarterback. Over the middle, that's caught and brought down pretty quickly. There is a flag on the far side of the field. As we don't really have an indication on who this is against yet. Nobody's really moving. So it looks like all the players are a bit kind of interested to see what happens here. about five yards off the line. It's a, the territory where there's a legal contact more often than not. Offense is starting to move back though, so this looks like it might be on center. Ineligible man downfield, interesting. 
So the call goes against center and they'll back up inside their own 30. As already in a big hole in this game, now further to go to try to get back in it. Yeah, I think this one certainly in control for the Tigers at this point. Similar to what we saw a couple of weeks ago against Rhodes. If you're the visiting team here, you just want to try and finish this game on a high note, carry things forward as much as possible, play good, clean football from here on out. Under pressure. Getting away, and he's going to run for it. Harmel trying to swat the ball out, drives him out of bounds. And there will be no flag, kind of walking that line along the sideline. Yeah, Goman having already coughed the ball up once this half. I'm sure the senior, the fifth-year linebacker, Caleb Harmel, aware of that, <laughs> seeing that replay, a big overhand swat down at the football. But Goman, again, making the adjustment, moving that football at the end of the play from that inside to that outside hand, trying to keep it away from the defender. Just little things like that that show the mindfulness, the growth of a quarterback, even in-game. It'll be second down and five after the run. Give to McDaniel. Trying to spin away, but only going to get about two, and it'll bring up third down for center. If you guys want an interesting statistic, this 31-3 score here with around 11 minutes or so to go in the fourth quarter continues Trinity's streak of scoring 30 or more points in every game so far this season. Absolutely incredible the way that the offense and also in some cases the defense have just been allowed to keep on rolling. Third down and three for center. It'll be a give and nowhere to go. No, still fighting and gonna get the first down. Looked like he was brought down well short of the line to gain. Well, that's Keaton Martin able to keep pushing forward and move the sticks. Yeah, certainly right. Looked like there was a little bit of a stalemate to the right side into that short side of the field. Wrapped up, looked like one of those defensive linemen. I think that was A.J. Townsend who had a hand on the jersey on the back of Martin, but Martin doing a nice job to stay upright, keep moving forward, and then at the very end of that one, got some help from his offensive lineman to push him across the line of the game. Amir Mustafa also back on the field. Goman over the middle, that's caught. Good extension on that play, as that's Ethan Mays who reels it in on first down. And great hands from Mays right there. Center offense continuing to just take these little gains time and time again all afternoon. They've been pretty successful at staying ahead of the sticks, putting themselves in manageable situations. They've put together a couple of nice drives here in the second half. Went all the way down, but of course got stopped in the red zone inside the 10. Under pressure, Goman has to roll out. Flag is thrown as Goman throws it away, and that'll almost certainly be holding on the Colonels. Yeah, and Goman, all afternoon, has done a great job of extending plays, but when that happens consistently, you're really putting the onus on your offensive linemen to continue to just be very, very technical. It makes it incredibly difficult when you continue to break the pocket on plays that aren't designed to do so. That's when your offensive linemen are getting in trouble, reaching and ultimately just grabbing jerseys as those defensive linemen are trying to peel away in pursuit of the quarterback. And that's exactly what happened right there. So the catch is nullified. It'll be, or the incompletion is nullified. It'll be second down and long. Specifically 15 to go. And a lot of setbacks for center in this game. We talked about all the special teams gaffes they've had a turnover in this game. Not a lot's gone right lately for the team in white and yellow. As we approach nine minutes remaining in this one. Goman quickly, that's caught, Scotty Brown, but brought down by James O'Gunran. And it'll bring up third and long. 
with third down and nine here, it'll be very interesting to see where exactly they go. Eight minutes and it's going to be a little bit under 30 seconds before this ball gets snapped. So not a lot of time. It, it'll be interesting to see what kind of tactics Coach, uh, Coach Fire does here. Under pressure. Lobs it. It is caught. Scotty Brown reeling it in again. He's made so many big catches in this game. This one puts center inside the 30. And you asked, where do you go with the football right here? But Cole, you're right. Scotty Brown has been the go-to guy this afternoon. Five receptions for 70 yards before that one right there. So nearing 100 total on the afternoon. I think that one, though, was just a great job of Goman putting it right on his receiver. It didn't look like Scotty Brown was aware of that one coming in. All of a sudden, it was just kind of on his body, and he made sure that he secured it for the first down. Goman going to heave it for the end zone. It's incomplete, but there's a flag, and that'll be P.I., that one definitely going to go on Johnny Cusa. It was number one for the Colonels. Billiter, whose name we've called a couple of times on those deep routes this afternoon. He had the position on the Tigers' corner right there. Had the inside track, and it was Johnny Cusa who looked like he grabbed that back shoulder to try and pull himself in front of the play in order to make a play on the ball, but the official was well positioned in the end zone. That one's gonna get called all day long. Last week it was Blake Busson who broke out, or two weeks ago it was Blake Busson that broke out for Center College. He had six catches for 144 against Barry. Today it's Ben Billiter and Scotty Brown coming up with the catches for the Center Colonels. Give up the middle, and we'll take that one inside the 10. That's Gabe Walker with his third carry of the game. Center's done a really good job so far of kind of keeping their attack balanced. They're able to both run it very well, kind of get the slow yardage, and then once Trinity starts to kind of set up to expect those really short runs, then they're able to hit over the middle uh, on the sidelines with the air attack. Give up the middle. Nowhere to go. Mac Douglas in there to trip him up. It'll be third down inside the red zone. Yeah, and it's their second time in the red zone this afternoon. Now their second time inside the 10 yard line. Interesting to see how they respond after getting stopped the first time around, electing to go on the ground on that last play. But of course they still have the opportunity to pick up a first down just about at the four, maybe the three yard line. The skies have cleared up here in San Antonio. We started with an overcast, now a bright sunny day. Third down and five. Throwing to the outside, that's gonna be caught. Breaks a tackle. And that spot's gonna come in just short. So it'll be fourth down and one inside the red zone for center. And some new bodies trotting onto the field. It looks like some bigger ones at that. They're going to stack the box right here, try and hammer this one up the middle, but it looks like they'll need a full yard in order to gain the first down. And you have to assume that in this area of the field, with that down and distance, they're going to run it up the middle. Fourth down. Give up the middle, as you said, but nowhere to go. James O'Gunren blows the play up, and the Tigers hold strong on fourth down again. One thing that we haven't talked about this afternoon is the response of this defensive unit. Only three points allowed, and obviously centers gained some yards on the afternoon, but now two stops in really goal-to-go scenarios after giving up 37 points on the road last week. But I did mention they gave up eight in the second half, so across the last six quarters played, only 11 points surrendered by this Trinity defense. Just a tremendous, tremendous job the way that they've stepped up here this afternoon, the way they stepped up to end the game and a very important one at Barry a week ago. 
Ryan back now in the game at quarterback as this one seems to be well in hand. Give to Johnny Milo as now more players getting in for Trinity. But another thing on this defense, Barry never entered the red zone last week. All of their touchdowns, huge plays, four plays of over 40 yards that resulted in touchdowns for Barry last week. Two red zone drives for center today, both stopped by this defense. No points allowed. And again, got to mention it earlier, whenever you're in the red zone, there's a lot less space to cover. And so arguably it's easier to defend and it's harder to attack whenever you're in, you know, five, 10 yards to go as opposed to 20, 30 yards to go just because there's less options, less routes that receivers can run, less sort of room for plays to develop. That ball caught by B.J. Rainey as it looks like he's going to be just short of the first down. It'll be third in less than a yard. Also, in addition to that, there's a lot more freedom for the defense. You're able to send more people in on blitzes, which makes it a lot harder on quarterbacks trying to figure out where to go. It's just overall a lot easier for defenses to try and defend the closer and closer you get. Give up the middle. It's Milo as he's going to lunge for the first down. This Tiger drive going to continue as new faces getting in the game. Yeah, a lot of new faces in there, including some on that offensive line. And Johnny Milo needed to make use of some pretty quick, nifty footwork, stuck his foot in the ground. I think that one was supposed to go to the left side of the offensive line, but there was some penetration there. Did a nice job of recognizing that early, just diving forward to get the yardage needed for the first down. Play action. Back to the outside, and that's caught. Good catch by Caleb Crawford, who remains in the game. As yeah, so that'll be a gain of eight for number 19. Another note, Jackson Williams has entered the game at running back. We heard his name called a lot two weeks ago at Rhodes. Yeah, and excited to see him get some opportunity as we see a great shot of that throw and catch. Ryan back to Caleb Crawford out there on the outside who went fully parallel to the ground to haul that one in. Great effort. Still just second and one, though. It will be second and one. Give to Jackson Williams, trying to get to the outside. Cuts back. And we'll see if he has enough. And it looks like he does. First down for Trinity. We talked about that Barry game, the slow start that they had. There may have been a reason for that, and a lot of it was their travel issues. So they flew into Atlanta. Barry is in Rome, Georgia, so they want to drive from Atlanta and Hartsfield to Rome, Georgia. But they get in a fender bender in their charter bus. So they have to stop. They have to wait for officers. Coach Urban has to give a statement, give paperwork for every single person on the bus. That takes a long time. They don't get to the hotel until midnight. And part... Not an excuse for the slow start. There were a lot of coverage breakdowns, but potentially a good reason why they weren't quite ready to play. Yeah, I think Coach Urban mentioned that it was the first time they got to the hotel after midnight, so I'm not sure we even have an accurate ETA. But, of course, it was in our conversation with Coach Urban yesterday that we heard about that for the first time. That wasn't something that came out before the game or was talked about during the game. It certainly wasn't something that they were going to allow to distract them from the task at hand. I think it's something that any coach uses to motivate his team and any coach looks at as a great opportunity, more so than a setback. And I think it's something that we heard from Coach Rich Duncan out of Rhodes who talked about the same thing happening to his team, some travel issues that they had. But certainly just another bump in the road, something else to overcome, just another adversity. And I think these coaches and these teams really live up to that anytime they can. Flip play to Rainey and it'll be third down. Now it should be noted, very minor accident. Nobody was hurt, just a, more of an inconvenience for the Tigers than anything, but did not get a lot of sleep last night, we can assume, as that was a morning kickoff at Barry. As Milo will be driven back in the backfield, that was third down, so We'll see if the Tigers will punt with about a minute remaining in this game. One thing that you mentioned, of course, uh, the coverage lapses. Uh, defensive backs coach uh, Austin Grauer also had uh, a bit of an issue there. Um, had a work conference up in Atlanta. Um, he's not a full-time coach, 
uh, works with Frost Bank, so we had to uh, have a uh, business trip up in Montana, and then his flight into Hartsfield didn't land until about three, and so he decides to take a little stop about midway. It's about an hour and a half, two hour drive between Atlanta and Rome, so about midway between, he decides to stop, take a break, and his rental gets stolen while he's there at the hotel. So just, it felt like everything off the field that could have gone wrong for Trinity did, but overall a great job, able to sort of come back, kind of tune everything out, and just not be, you know, I don't want to say unaffected, because it was definitely one of the closer games so far this season, but not to let it affect them too much. Yeah, Coach Urban, very complimentary of his assistant coaches. A lot of part-time coaches on this staff that decide to spend their free time from their other jobs coaching this team. And very complimentary of that group and very thankful for everything they do. And we're very thankful for everything our crew does. As you see, Reed Rosales, he's the one I said was getting a workout, walking down the field, back and forth, back and forth, getting good shots for us from the field level. So you want to thank him, Adam Mann, David also on camera today, and I don't know exactly who signed up in the control room, but we know Josh and Ryan are there. They run the show. They get everything set up for us as Gaiman gets that punt away. And good coverage by this Trinity coverage unit, bringing him down at the 26, but we're so thankful for everything we have at Tiger Network and the people who put it together. Got an injury down on the field. Can't see the number from here but it's the punt returner, 15. There we go. Sorry, I wasn't looking at the screen, but number 15. That's... It looks like that'll be Scotty Brown down. He's had a big day today. Last... Unless there's another 15 on this roster, which is entirely possible. But if it is Scotty Brown, that is a huge loss for center as he's had a big game today. And you hate to see that in a 28-point game with only 49 seconds remaining. He's got the sleeve on on that left arm. I think that, that is going to be Brown. Let's see what happened here. Oh. And we will not show that one again as we sincerely hope he's okay. As he gets helped up, we'll take a break on Tiger Network. And Scotty Brown able to get off the field. We all hope he's okay. 49 seconds left in this one, 31 to three. Trinity has the lead. Jack Goman still in there at quarterback. Give up the middle as that'll be a minimal gain. Center will have to snap the ball one more time, but after that, this game will be over and the Tigers will remain undefeated in conference play. Yeah, they'll move to three and zero so far in SAA play. And for the first time in what is likely a long time, this is a center Colonels team that will be 0-2 in SAA play. And for the first time in perhaps even Goldman longer. Goldman loses the football, and this Tigers defense gets one final takeaway to put their stamp on this game. And what a game it's been for this side of the ball. Only three points allowed and another turnover forced. Three points allowed, almost more takeaways than points allowed this afternoon. That's the second that they'll be credited with, but there were a handful more that they almost had. I think that was Cade Rapson from behind who knocked that one out of Goman's arm. And number 12, who we've already talked about and mentioned this afternoon because of some great work in kick coverage. Quentin Joseph, the first year able to basically just have that ball fall right into his arms. And looks like we're gonna get the victory formation here. Ryan back will take a knee. And that should ride an end to this one. A really full crowd here at Trinity University Stadium. Parents weekend here as a lot of families came to watch their kids play and it's a happy group. 
Confetti flies as the clock strikes zero, and the Tigers have won this game 31-3. to Guys, what are your general takeaways? Absolutely just a great play at every single level. Started out a little bit slow, uh, of course, for Trinity, but after that second half, or, or sorry, after the end of the first half into the second half, they were just completely in control the entire game, and that's something that we've seen a lot. Coach Urban and the Trinity team do a fantastic job with their halftime adjustments, do a fantastic job figuring out what works, figuring out what doesn't, and opposing coaches, opposing teams just really seem to struggle with that for whatever reason. And it's been something that Trinity has taken advantage of a lot this season. They took advantage of it a lot last season and the year before. They have just been absolutely incredible in second half play for basically as long as I can remember. Yeah, as we were saying just before that interception, fumble recovery, whatever you want to call it at the end of the game, this is a Trinity team that's going to move now to 5-1 and one on the year as they enter their bye week. A center squad that's going to drop to 1-4, 0-2 and oh and two in conference play. Some ugly numbers, frankly, and I think Andy Fry is not going to like those, but I think he's going to like the way his team came out and competed this afternoon. We mentioned this was the center team that was picked third in the SAA preseason poll. They're going to face easier competition, but for Trinity, they're going to get to go into their bye week at 5-1, and one, and I think they're going to love that. As it's tradition, after the Tigers win at home, they will sing the alma mater, and we'll let you enjoy it. This is like a whole, like, this is just an experiment. This is like trying to just like look at each other. Especially about, like, you know, how people get all the time. I think that we're in it. Yeah. 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 Welcome back on Tiger Network, 31 to three, the final score as the Tigers will head into the bye week, as we mentioned before, the alma mater. And Coach Urban had some thoughts on that. Yeah, um, Coach Urban, exceptionally happy for the way that the bye week worked out. Of course, we've got midterms uh, both this week and also leading into next week. So from a school standpoint, of course, it's a great time, uh, both, both for the athletes and also for all of us. But... On top of that, it allows all of the players to kind of get a little bit of a or get a little bit of a rest right in the middle of the season, and it also sets up a really great schedule in terms of home away split. Three of the final five games of the season are going to be here at home in Trinity. It is going to be just a great setup for a final half of the season that should essentially be one that decides whether or not Trinity makes it into the playoffs or not. Winning the conference gets you an automatic bid into the playoffs. Trinity on their way to doing that so far, but still some work to do. They'll head into the bye week, then go to Georgetown to play Southwestern. And then the next time we will see you will be against Millsaps on October 28th. For everybody in the control room, Luke Terry and Caleb Reed, I'm Cole Isaacson saying so long from San Antonio. <laughs>